Today, I'm pulling back the curtain to show you how web apps really work. From the front end you see, to the back end crunching data, as well as the database and APIs. We will also see what role technologies such as React or Python play. OK, let's meet Tina. She is planning to spend a few days in Zurich in February. So she goes to the Airbnb homepage and types Zurich and selects her dates. All this is happening in the front end. You can think of the front end as the part of the website Tina sees and interact with. Buttons, the search form, the photos, everything that's displayed nicely for the user. But here's the catch. The front end doesn't have all the answers about Zurich or the available apartments. It's not where all the information lives. Its main task is displaying things. Kind of like a friendly receptionist who greets you, but doesn't necessarily have access to all hotels booking in the system. Now, here's where things get interesting. When Tina hits the search button, the front end needs to get some real data. And it does this by sending a request to backend, asking, hey, backend, Tina wants to see apartments in Zurich for these dates. What should I show her? But wait a moment, how does frontend communicate with backend? This is where the API comes into play. API, by the way, stands for Application Programming Interface. Imagine the API as a high-speed tube, like the kind you still see in pharmacies. The frontend puts a request into the API tube. Now the backend gets to work. You can think of the backend as the brain of the operation. It's where all the logical decisions are made. But the backend doesn't have all the answers yet. It needs the database. Picture the database as a giant filling cabinet, or if you're into spreadsheets, a huge collection of Excel tables. It holds all the details, every apartment, availability, prices, history of bookings, and so on. The backend asks the database, can you show me a list of apartments in Zurich that are available in February? The database does its job, finds the right information, and hands it back. But we're not done yet. The backend doesn't just throw the raw data back at Tina. So the backend applies business logic to make sure Tina only gets what she needs. Apartment names, prices, photos. Sometimes the backend even does extra calculations, like figuring out the total cost of Tina's stay based on how many nights she stay. Once the backend has everything organized neatly, it sends a response through the API tube to the front end. And then voila, the front end takes that response and turns it into a nice user-friendly display. At this point, Tina has found her perfect apartment and hits book now. And guess what? The same process kicks off again. The front end sends another request to backend, this time with Tina's booking and payment details, and the backend updates the apartment in the database as booked. And backend sends a response to front end, which shows Tina her cheerful booking confirmed message. But what about the email confirmation? Backend can trigger an email service to send her the details automatically. Tina doesn't see this part of the process, so no front end involved. It's all happening in the background. Before we close this workflow, it's important that you understand another purpose of APIs. Imagine we also want to tell Tina the average temperature in Zurich in February. The backend can send a request to an external service like weather.com's API asking for the typical weather data. Weather.com responds something like 2 degrees Celsius and the backend includes that in its response to the front end. Now, Tina not only sees the confirmation page, but also information about the weather. OK, you might have heard terms like JavaScript or Python. Let me show you how these technologies fit into the picture. For the front end, the core technologies are HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. These are the building blocks of the user's interface. And you may also have heard about frameworks like React or Angular that help developers build dynamic, responsive websites more easily. On the back end, developers use languages like Python, Ruby, or Java, often paired with frameworks like Django, Rails, or Spring Boot. And believe me, there's so many more technologies out there. For storing all the important data in the database, we often use relational databases like SQL or SQL, which organizes data into tables. So remember those Excel sheets from before. But 
there are also no SQL databases like MongoDB. For the APIs, common technologies include REST or GraphQL. A little warning. This is a simplified overview, of course. In reality, the front end sometimes handles more of the heavy lifting and the back end can be much more complex. And we didn't even touch on topics like security, encryption, or processes running in parallel. If you're interested in diving deeper into one of these areas, let me know in the comments.